There's nothing like opening up a live beehive, watching bees hatch and communicate with each other and harvesting honey from your very own backyard. But unfortunately, beekeeping is not an easy hobby to learn about, get into, be successful in. So let's simplify the process to keeping bees so it's easy to understand and we'll make it a whole lot more fun and a more enjoyable process. In this video, I am going to explain the parts to a Langstroth style beehive, which is the most commonly used beehive in the United States, as well as some of the other equipment that you're going to need when you get started. So that when you are done watching this short video, you will be ready to go straight to any number of beekeeping supply sites and buy what you need. Before you buy your beehive, you're going to need somewhere to put your beehive so that it is not sitting flat on the grass or the ground. I recommend elevating your beehive a good 18 inches. I just have pallets on the ground and a commercial apiary I worked for had thousands of hives. They just had four beehives to a pallet. You can buy hive stands from Bee King supply sites. You can lay down bricks. You can put cinder blocks down. This is called your bottom board. This is a solid bottom because it has no screen on it. And this is the first part of the beehive that you're going to lay on whatever you're using as your beehive stand. Now, one thing you might sometimes put on your bottom board that you should really purchase is an entrance reducer. And so instead of this large space for the bees to get in and out, they might have just this tiny little space or you can rotate it and have this space. The next part of the beehive is the brood box. It is nine and five eighths of an inch tall. It is sometimes referred to as the brood chamber or the deep box. You're gonna want two of these. And the brood box is where the queen lays the eggs. And so these baby bees, before they've hatched, is what we call brood. And the brood is usually in the lower section of the hive. And the upper section is the honey. This is a frame and it is just how it sounds, a frame. Uh, what you do is you either are buying a 10 frame or an eight frame box. Now that will decide how wide your box is. What you do is you put foundation inside your frames. Foundation can be plastic, can be beeswax, or you can use no foundation at all. Foundation comes in different colors. Often the black is used for the brood boxes because it makes it easier to spot eggs. Yellow foundation is often the color used in the honey frames. Uh, you will also see green foundation and that lets you know that that is for the drones, which is the male bees and the drones hatch from honeycomb that's a little bit bigger. So these cells sizes are a little bit bigger too. Next, we have the queen excluder. The holes in the queen excluder are big enough that worker bees can fit through them, but too small for most queen bees to get through. And you would put your queen excluder here on top of your second deep box. I do not use queen excluders almost ever, and I will get into when to use your queen excluder so that it doesn't turn into a honey excluder as what happens with a lot of beginner beekeepers. Next we have our honey super or honey box or shallow, whatever you want to call it. It's just identical to your deep boxes, but not as tall. Finally, you have your inner cover. Inner cover kind of looks like a lid, but has a hole in the middle and a notch right here. You put this on top of your beehive, on top of the very uppermost box, however many boxes there are. And it can make taking the outer cover off a lot easier. And the last part of the beehive is the lid, or this is referred to as an outer cover. There are also migratory lids. You don't need to worry about those. Those are more so for commercial beekeepers. In addition to the beehive, you're going to want to get one smoker. I actually went my first couple years without a smoker. I just use a spray bottle full of sugar syrup. Don't recommend it. Get yourself a smoker. You're going to want a hive tool. There's three different kinds of hive tools you'll see. One is a J-hook or hobby hive tool. That one's my preference. This is more of the general commercial beekeeper hive tool, which my boss, when I worked for a commercial apiary, made me use. And then there's one with all of these funny looking pointy things on it. Never even tried that one, it seemed a little unnecessary. This is a mouse guard. This is put over the entrance. You can make, make a mouse guard kind of easily. And it's not something you really need until it starts to get cooler out in the late summer, early fall. You're also going to want a feeder. Feeders come in a variety of shapes and sizes and price points. I recommend a nice feeder that is a wooden box like this one because a lot of the cheaper feeders you will find hundreds of drowned bees inside it, which is an awful thing to see. You're gonna to wanna to get a pair of nice beekeeping gloves as well as your veil. So you can get a veil, which just covers your head. 
Uh, or you can get a veil connected to a jacket, or you can get a full beekeeping suit. It's up to you, your preference. For each colony of bees you purchase, you're going to want one full beehive. This beehive should include one bottom board, two deep boxes, two honey boxes, one inner cover, one outer cover, one queen, queen excluder, one entrance reducer. Frames and foundation for your deep boxes and your honey supers. You're also going to want one smoker, one hive tool, one veil, and sting resistant gloves. You'll see that most beekeeping supply sites sell beekeeping kits, and this makes buying your equipment a lot easier, but they usually just sell you two deep boxes and one honey box. I recommend just buying a second honey box in case you need it. Once you get your beehive, you're going to want to assemble everything. And then you want to cover it with some kind of exterior coating to protect it from the elements. You can use any kind of outdoor house paint or you can purchase these beeswax coated beehives from Galena Farms. Use coupon code Larissa for 5% off. Then what you're going to do is order your bees. And when you pick up your bees, you're going to bring them to your beehive. So you're going to have your hive stand, whatever you choose it to be, as long as it's level. You're going to have one deep box and you're going to fill it up with frames and you're going to put your bees inside. If you purchase the feeder, then you can put it on top of this box or if it's the feeder that goes inside the box, then put it in there. Then you're going to want to take an empty box. It doesn't matter which one, but just put it right over the can. So to protect it from falling over and then you're going to put your cover on top. You're going to check your bees once every week, every other week. You don't have to check them every week, but I like to re recommend to beginners to check them every week because this is a great time to get used to opening up a beehive and being around your bees while the hive is small. Get used to spotting the queen and looking for eggs while there's not a ton of bees all over the place. You have, you have like maybe 10,000 bees. Later on in the summer, you're going to have 30 or 40,000 bees in your hive and it's going to be much harder to spot these things. So you're going to keep checking on your bees and you're going to see that bees are going to build honeycomb off of the foundation. Once only two or three frames in this first box still don't have any honeycomb and are empty, but the other frames do have honeycomb, you can add your second box. So you're going to take your lid off, you're going to take your feeder off, take your inner cover off, and you're going to take your second deep box, you're going to put it on top of the first, and you're going to fill it completely up with frames. Then over the course of the next few weeks, you're going to be inspecting your hive and your, the bees are going to move up to the second box and start to build honeycomb on these frames. And just like the first box, once you start to see that most of the frames are full and only two or three frames don't have any honeycomb on them, that's when you can start to add your honey boxes. So you're again going to take the inner and outer covers off and add your honey box. This could be your sh a shallow or a medium, but it's not going to be anywhere near as tall as your deep boxes. You're going to fill this box up with its frames. 10 frames for a 10 frame box, 8 frames for an 8 frame box. You should not have to feed your bees anymore and you're going to add your inner and outer cover. Now, a lot of people have this misconception that bees swarm because there's not enough room in the hive. And so if you just keep on adding more and more honey boxes on top, you'll prevent your bees from swarming off. That is not the case. In order to prevent your bees from swarming off, you need room in the brood chamber where the queen is laying her eggs. Doesn't matter how many honey boxes are on top especially if you have a queen excluder on. So if you don't get around to giving enough room in these boxes, the queen does have the option to move up into these upper honey boxes to lay eggs. If you don't have a queen excluder on, if you do have a queen excluder on, what they're gonna do is swarm off and you're gonna have no queen. Personally, I would rather just lose a couple of honey frames because the queen laid some eggs and keep my queen and prevent my bees from swarming. So once this hive starts filling up this honey super and is drawing out comb, then we can take our queen excluder. If you want to use one and you put it on top, that second deep box, and you put your honey super back on top. 
And then finally, the bees may or may not need a second honey super. If you start to see that this box is at least halfway full, then you can add another honey super on top. If your beehive is small, like when you first purchase it, you'll want to put an entrance reducer on. This one that reduces the entrance by about half, and most of the time is sufficient. But later in the year, like early fall, late summer, when there's not so many flowers blooming, or if it's really dry out and that's killed off a lot of the flowers, you'll start to see bees robbing each other. So when that happens, this teeny tiny little entrance over here in the entrance reducer is the one that you're going to want to put on your hive. Wherever you live, start with the standard tier area because it will make buying equipment and finding help uh, when you're talking to people in your club or local beekeepers a whole lot easier when you start with the standard. And then once you are more experienced, you can move on to any style beehive you like. All right, so now you are ready to go buy your beehives. Your next step is to go to the link in the video description to download my free book, The Seven Steps to Getting Started Keeping Bees. It's short, it's free, and it has a diagram of this beehive along with a checklist for all the things you need. Then you can go to any number of beekeeping supply sites and make your purchases. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and then binge watch all of my YouTube videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.